This is going to be a serious encyclopedic video because I am doing a full brand review of Charlotte Tilbury. I'm going to talk about every single item I've tried from the brand, and I'm also going to be applying a full face of the brand. I don't think I'm going to get to apply every single product to my face, but I'm going to use as many things as I can, including some new things I picked up. I picked up a couple of new shades of the Eyes to Mesmerize shade extension, so I have Sunlit Glow and Exaggerize. I also picked up the new cream bronzer in the shade Medium, as well as the Lip and Cheek Glow, which which is not new, but it was sold out for a really long time. I think they released it last year for holiday, um, but it's back now on the website. And I picked that up in the shade Color of Passion. I also do have a 15% off discount code now that you can use anytime on the Charlotte Tilbury website. There are some terms and conditions that I will list below, but it pretty much works for all full priced items except for the kits. I'm admittedly a bit of a latecomer to the Charlotte Tilbury brand. I think the very first product that I picked up from the brand was the Hollywood Flawless Filter, which was and remains one of my all-time favorite makeup products. But even after that, I was very slow to get into the brand. I think the brand overall has a very specific aesthetic, which is elevated neutrals and glowy skin and lots of bronzy, golden goddess, rosy tones. And I think they've done such a good job of taking that corner of the beauty market and exploding it and turning it into this fantasy that while glamorous still remains accessible to the everyday person. So for example, I think a lot of people just have like one Charlotte Tilbury lipstick and they feel like they can access the glam that comes with the brand without necessarily being a full glam person themselves. And I also think that Charlotte Tilbury as a brand has changed so much in the last two, three years. They've really blown up with the rise of TikTok and really smart viral marketing, but also with the change in makeup consumption practices in general throughout COVID, people want to feel good. They want to feel like an elevated version of themselves. And I think Charlotte Tilbury just like hit at the right time, especially as people were going back to work, going back to offices. I also think that the, the brand overall has become much more inclusive and expansive in shade tones and the kinds of skin tones that they you know, curate their products for in the last three, four years. And I think especially the rise of Hollywood Flawless Filter was a key moment for that because for me, I had not seen many liquid illuminating products that had more than maybe one or two shades. That was the first range where it was like, oh, there's a liquid illuminator here for light to deep. And I think they've even added more shades since. Another example is the expansion of their Pillow Talk line, which originally started with their one Pillow Talk shade, which was supposed to look good on everyone, but you know, it was very much a light medium skin tone kind of shade. And so since then they've expanded the range to have a Pillow Talk medium and I think a Pillow Talk deep. So that's just my general analysis of Charlotte Tilbury. And that's also why I have come late to the brand, but I do feel like that maybe gives me a sort of different or maybe unique perspective to the brand, not as like a long-term like ride or die Charlotte Tilbury fan, but as someone who acknowledges and sees the evolution of the brand and I like the things that I'm seeing and the direction that they're going in. I am going to talk about skincare and makeup. Um, starting with skin prep for makeup and then makeup application and then ending with the rest of the skincare. The first thing I wanna talk about is actually what I prepped my skin with today and it's the Charlotte's Magic Cream Light. And this is actually an SPF 20, though it doesn't say it on the actual bottle. It does say it on the box and it's a chemical SPF, so you're not going to have a white cast. Um, it's called the Light Cream, I do think it, it, I mean, it's definitely lighter than the magic cream, which comes in a glass jar, which I'll talk about, but it still has like a bit of um, moisture and hydration. It's not one of those light creams that just like completely, you know, evaporates off your face. It does have that like milky feeling and it sets to like 
kind of a velvety finish. I wouldn't say it's matte, but you can definitely tell that this is formulated for makeup prep because it almost has like a primer like satin velvety finish to touch while still moisturizing the skin. Overall, my feelings about this are pretty neutral. I like it. I don't think it blows me out of the water. I wish the SPF were a little bit higher. Even an SPF 30, I think would tip me further into the direction of using and liking it more. Actually, I'm gonna talk about this mask first because I don't wanna talk about it. Um, and have to put it on over makeup. I've tried a lot of weird face masks, but this might be one of the scariest ones I've ever tried. Um, okay, so this is the cryotherapy face mask, and it basically has two straps so that you can strap it to the back of your head and then to the top of your head because there's this like chin buckle. For me, I turn to this most for depuffing. So if you are someone who wakes up with a lot of puffiness, ice can help take that down. So there are four gel pads that have the like little freezer balls. Um, they're along the cheekbones, the forehead, and there's a pad that goes across the chin to, I think, help with like lifting of the jawline and neck. There are also five like metal balls that I think in theory are supposed to be like acupressure balls, but they don't really stick to my forehead. Like they, there's a bit of space between my forehead and this, um, I don't know, this plane of the mask. So that's not really why I would use it, nor do I think you're gonna get like significant benefits from that. I don't know, maybe you do, but I don't. My general thoughts about this mask are that it feels nice. Um, I think any mask is very particular to your face shape, especially one like this that's meant to like cover so many planes of your face. It only really works if your face is like fitting within the dimensions of the mask. That said, I really like that it's hands-free. I like that there's it's a super secure mask because you get the double strap action. However, when it comes to the actual benefits of the mask, I don't know if it's gonna do anything different for you than using an ice roller, which I love and I have like a $15 ice roller from Amazon that I really like to use. I received this in PR and it was very fun to receive. It's definitely skin entertainment, um, but I don't think it's like a must have of the brand. I pulled you in a little bit closer because I am going to prime my skin even more with the Invisible UV Flawless Primer, which is a broad spectrum SPF 50. If you have dry skin and you know you're going to apply the sufficient amount of SPF that you would need with this primer, then I think you should go for it. For me, this is supplemental to my regular SPF because it is so glowy that I know I can't use the fully suggested amount of SPF um, in this primer form. It is a little small guy too, so you might, it's one ounce, so you might not want to use this as your primary SPF because it's expensive and you don't get a ton of product. So it comes in this like squeezy tube, but the cap opens like that. I just take a little bit out, like that much maybe, and I actually apply this to the high points of my cheeks. This is also a chemical SPF, so it's not gonna give you a white cast, it's not going to give you flashback. I would sort of describe this as if you had a regular like SPF primer and then you added 10% of Hollywood Flawless Filter. It has um, like a touch of luminosity, not anywhere near what Hollywood Flawless Filter gives you, but it does bounce back light and it makes the skin look really beautiful. I think it actually sets down to a slightly grippy, um, like a grippy, velvety finish, I would say. Then I have the Charlotte's Magic Lip Oil. I feel like a lot of people don't know about this. I didn't know about this until I received this in PR, and it's honestly really nice. It's a lip balm, lip oil, that comes with this like crystal roller ball. It's why it's called the Crystal Elixir. And it actually feels very rich and very grippy on the lips. It's not sticky, but it really like coats over the lips and it stays there for a good long while. It does have this like 
vanilla sort of scent and I really like this for makeup prep and I would also use this in the evening because it is that rich. It does stay on the lips and the roller ball feels nice too. For foundation, I have Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation in the shade six. I've mentioned this many times, I've reviewed it, it's been in favorites videos, so I'm not gonna spend too much time here, but it is one of the few kind of luminous finish foundations that I can use as someone with combo skin because it doesn't slide around, it has surprisingly long wear, and it makes the skin look really hydrated throughout the whole day without ever getting sticky or oily or breaking up. So for me, it walks that fine line of looking like hydrated skin without feeling overly greasy. I haven't tried any of the other Charlotte Tilbury, Charlotte Tilbury um, foundations. I've always been really curious to try Light Wonder because I think I would really like that, but I just haven't gotten around to trying it. I should. So I just have one pump on the back of my hand and I'm just gonna do a really light layer around the skin with a brush. I think this applies well with a brush or with fingers, even with a sponge. And I would say this is buildable to a medium finish. It's not gonna get you to like full, full coverage, but that's not really what I look for in foundations. I also haven't tried her, what's that foundation called? Her full coverage mattifying one. I haven't tried that one, but that's not really what I go for these days. I don't have any of the Charlotte Tilbury concealers. I'm missing concealers and her brow products, I think. Other than that, I have a full face of makeup. So I'm just going to apply my usual everyday concealers and I'll be back. So let's talk about the iconic Hollywood Flawless Filter. At this point in the culture, the beauty culture, we all understand liquid illuminators, right? We know that you can use them as a primer, you can use them as a highlighter, you can mix it into your foundation. I think we all have a general literacy around liquid illuminators, but I do think when this launched, people didn't really get it and it was, I didn't find a lot of um, product education and I understand why the brand education was difficult because you can use this in actually so many different ways. Personally, I use it on the high points of my face, either under or over foundation. I really love this shade number four medium. I think it's just perfect for my skin tone because it's like a light medium, very neutral, slightly golden, slightly olive undertone. I also just looked on the website and there are now 12, 11 or 12 different shades of this. I think originally they released one through eight and then they've released half shades for several of the shades and it's also available in a mini. I mean, obviously this has been a popular product. So, you know, I mentioned earlier that this is one of the products that I think signaled a change in the brand and this was the first one I tried. So if you're not familiar, it's a glass tube. It comes with a wand. I just dot it on my face or I put it on the back of my hand and then I blend it out that way. It's very, very mistake proof, I think. So I'm just going to lightly keep it focused on the tops of my cheekbones and tap it out with a sponge. I think this moment of the Hollywood Flawless Filter also signaled a shift away from like metallic or overly blingy or sparkly highlighters. It kind of signaled this moment of wanting luminous skin without looking like you're wearing Becca Champagne Pop on your cheeks every single day, you know? I hope you can see the neutral undertone that I'm talking about. I do think the shimmer in this can be a little bit silvery depending on your skin tone. For me, I, I really love it. I, I have other liquid illuminators that I love, but I do always come back to this one in the rotation because it just makes the skin look so beautiful. I also think there are very few liquid illuminators that have a true olive undertone. This is one of them, and the other one that I can think of is Oryx Pyrite in their Glow Lust formula. Those both have true olive undertones, so if you struggle to find a liquid illuminator and you have that undertone, this might be something to look out for. Charlotte Tilbury is obviously a very glow-centric brand, so I'm going to be piling on. <laughs> 
<laughs> glowy products all over my face. I'm gonna be very shiny today, but I have to talk about the Beauty Light Ones. It has completely blown up, obviously, on TikTok. It's been sold out forever, and I, I just recently tried this earlier this year. This is the shade Peach Gasm, which I thought would be perfect for me, and I have some... I have some controversial opinions about this. I like this, I think the shade is really pretty, but I don't quite get the hype around it. And you know, I am a late comer to this product. It's been around for like five, six years. Um, I had not tried it before. I think the shade Peach Gasm was what made me wanna try it. If you're not familiar, it comes with that sponge top squeezy tube, and there's like a liquid illuminator within this. And Peach Gasm has, I mean, it's a really pretty shade. That's the shade, very concentrated. So I'm going to, I mean, I already applied Flawless Filter, but I am going to just kind of apply it to the tops of my cheeks, just so you can see what it looks like. My controversial opinion with this is that I like it, but I don't love it. And I don't know if it's because the shade I got is a little bit not as refined in its shimmer as the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Maybe I would like this in the original shade a little bit more, but I find it to have, um, it just kind of sits on top of the skin. It doesn't become one with the skin. I just feel like the sheen, like you can see it as a stripe on my skin and it doesn't, look very flattering. It almost emphasizes skin texture on me, but I'm using it just so you can see it. I don't think the camera is going to pick up the nuances of these details, but it's more like in person. I don't think it's quite as flattering. And I think it has the potential to emphasize my pores or sink into pores throughout the day, like the pearly pearliness in the formula. So to me, this isn't a product fail by any means. It's a beautiful product, but it just didn't wow me. And I think the expectations were so high and the peachy tone got me really excited. I love all peachy tones, but ultimately it's not a product that I just, it's just not a product I reach for very often. There are other glowy peachy products that I would rather turn to personally that are a little bit less metallic, a little bit less frosty. All right, let's talk about a new product. I made a Charlotte Tilbury haul, a little order um, earlier this week and my order came very quickly. I cannot believe how big this bronzer is. I have used it once, but I just wanted to show you the box because it is so big. This is the compact, it is really beautiful. It's very weighty, it has this like mirrored finish to it. And this is the bronzer. And I was so surprised when I opened this because I thought it was a powder. I actually had to do a double take and touch it to see that it is in fact a cream. But it's not your like emollient balmy kind of bronzer. It's much stiffer and it does blend out nicely, but it, it sets to a more velvety finish. So it does set down. It's not going to slide around or feel tacky on the cheeks, which I actually really, really like. And this is the shade number two. I'm just going to take a synthetic brush. This is the Sephora um, 56 brush. And I'm going to take it directly into the pan and I'm going to stamp it around my face. So the claims of this are that it is humidity proof. It's also um, sweat proof. And it also is called the glow bronzer, which I do find to be slightly confusing because I think it sets to like a velvety finish and I don't see like a lot of pearl in the formula. Actually, let me swatch it for you. See what I mean? It has this like powdery quality when you blend it out, which I think is what makes it long wearing, but it doesn't have any shimmer or any pearliness running through it. So I don't quite see this as a glow bronzer. I just see this as a really nice, like almost airbrushed bronzer finish. It's not overly pigmented. It is super blendable and I think it blends out really nicely. It doesn't take too much effort. It doesn't stick to the skin or get patchy. 
it just is easy to apply and it almost applies the way a powder applies in that it gives you that diffused look and not all cream bronzers work that way i feel like this has almost this like powdery blendable quality to it which i really like however if you're looking for a very emollient product um, this might not be the cream bronzer for you if you want something much balmier and almost glossier on the skin then i'd go for you know the makeup by mario one or you know one of the more emollient formulas this is definitely designed for long wear this is definitely a warm tone um, I don't find it too orangey for my skin tone. I am pretty tan right now, but I think it has more of a golden undertone than an orangey undertone for me anyway. I am super bronzed, I'm super glowy. This is a very like editorial version of the Charlotte Tilbury skin look. So I am going to powder, it's a must right now. Um, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Air airbrush flawless finish powder in the shade number two i also reviewed this recently for the first time and i mentioned that i do really like it i think it adds a bit of blurring and diffusion it does seem to cover over any fine lines or pores and give you a really polished skin look for me it's not quite mattifying enough to use as an all-over setting powder especially in the t-zone i haven't tried the loose powder from charlotte tilbury but maybe that would be better at shine control but i do really love this for the under eyes so i'm just going to tap under the eye i think this powder i understand why people love it so much because it does add that blurred diffused filtered quality to the skin and it just kind of like smooths over imperfections. It almost creates this like veil over the skin and over any potential skin texture, which I think makes it perfect for all skin types, but I can see especially why mature skin types would love this. It does add a slight tint. It is a slightly tinted powder. And I think because there's the tint and the filtering quality, it appears to add coverage. Like it definitely brightened my under eyes and it just perfects the skin under the eyes. I did set a little bit more around my face with my other translucent powder, not a Charlotte Tilbury one, but I actually want to use the new Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow in the shade Color of Passion. And this shade is not one I would have picked up probably a year ago, but it's the kind of shade I've been really into lately. So this is a cream lip and cheek product. It is really beautiful. It comes in this little compact sorry mine's a little smudged it has that like mirrored finish this does feel much lighter than the bronzer compact um that is the shade color of passion it's this beautiful like pinky berry like a raspberry sort of shade and these both come with mirrors by the way but this is much weightier i mean this is obviously much larger this is smaller but it does feel a little bit light um, overall and I have used this both on the lips and cheeks and I really like this. It's the kind of shade that looks much deeper in the pan than it actually is on the skin and it shears out into just a beautiful like juicy flush. Now this is a formula that is pretty emollient. It's balmy, it has that kind of creamy, a little bit oily sort of feel and here's a swatch of it you can see it really shears out so it's not overly pigmented even though that shade is really deep it actually shears out into like a tinted balm so you'll notice i am applying this to a powdered cheek because it is a balmier formula and this works for me because i have oily combo skin and it works especially well with a brush I wouldn't necessarily do this with a sponge because I'd be scared to pick up the powder underneath, but with a really light touch, I just um, kind of tap it into the product. This is the Phytosurgeon's Sky Buff brush, which is amazing for cream blushes. And I'm just going to lightly, like a feather light touch, tap across the cheek. You can see that beautiful berry flush. And you know, I like to apply my blush um, kind of on the back of my cheek, even into my temple. 
I think this is a beautiful year round shade, but it's especially going to be stunning in the winter to create that like cranberry flush or that like just got in from the cold bitten flush sort of look. There is also a lighter tone of this. I think it's called color of love or something. It's more of a peachy pink, whereas this is more of a berry pink, but I have so many peachy pink blushes and I've been kind of into the berry tones lately. So I've really been liking this because I sheared it out on the cheek. It's not um, sticky or tacky. It's not too heavy either. It does sheer out nicely, especially with a brush when you kind of tap it on the way that I did. Don't like drag it across the skin. Make sure you're tapping. I think this is a website exclusive. I don't see a lot of people actually talk about this product. I bet if it were available at other retailers, people would talk about it more because it's such a beautiful formula. And I would love to see them release more shades of this because it is gorgeous. It's just everything people like right now in terms of like a compact, a cream blush compact. And of course it's beautiful because it's Charlotte Tilbury packaging. So let's move on to eyes. I have not tried Charlotte Tilbury's large, um, like her holiday eyeshadow palettes, but I have tried a couple of her quads. And, you know, I recently te tested the Exaggerize palette and reviewed it. You know, I love it. And I also have the Pillow Talk palette. So let me show you what they look like. They come with the Charlotte Tilbury Compact. This is Pillow Talk and this is Exaggerize. I personally find the eyeshadow formula to perform differently in each of these quads. In the Exaggerize palette, I find the mattes to be super blendable and just create such a beautiful diffused look across the eye. The topper I think is the star of the show. It's stunning and it is so reflective and so sparkly. Whereas with Pillow Talk, I don't get that same impact. And the quad itself, the color story is so uh, light that I don't find it to show up very well on my skin tone. I actually feel like she may have released a deeper version of the, the Pillow Talk, like a Pillow Talk medium or deep in the eyeshadows. I don't have that, so I can only speak to this quad, but I don't reach for it because it just doesn't give me that same like oomph or excitement or sophistication in terms of the finishes. So here is the Pillow Talk quad. It's obviously pretty, um, but I just don't get as excited about it. If anything, my favorite shade is this matte. Actually, it's almost like a pinky brown that I think makes a really nice like crease shade on me. But even this shade, that like mid-tone pink, it doesn't really show up when it's blended out on my skin tone. This is the Exaggerize quad, which I think is much more interesting and there's enough contrast between each of the shades that they look different. I think the lightest shade is just kind of a generic champagne shade, but I love this like rose gold. The topper is stunning. It gives you that like wet looking eyelid and I actually love this matte shade. It has a red sort of chestnut undertone that is super flattering and makes it different from just your regular old brown shade. I have not tried her baked jelly eyeshadows, the one that have the shimmery kind of textures and they have embossing on the pans. So I can't speak to those, I've heard they're amazing. But I would say if you are interested in picking up an eyeshadow quad, look up reviews for that specific color story because I just think some perform better than others and it really also depends on your tastes. Because I've recently reviewed Exaggerize, I am only going to use the um, matte shade in this to kind of sculpt the eye and bring some definition into the eye before I go into Eyes to Mesmerize. I'm so excited to talk to you about the new Eyes to Mesmerize shades. So I picked up two. I picked up Sunlit Glow, which is almost this like pinky gold duochrome shift. It definitely flashes pink. And then I picked up Exaggerize, which is, it doesn't look that complex 
in the pot, but just you wait. It has this beautiful neutral bronze base, but it has the most reflective sparkly shift. And I think I just discovered my new favorite product from Charlotte Tilbury. I've spoken about my love for this formula before. If you love the Tom Ford cream eyeshadows, Charlotte Tilbury was actually the creative director when they formulated those. So it has a very similar whipped moussey texture. I think if anything, the Charlotte Tilbury texture is a little bit more whipped and moussey and I do find it a little bit more wet feeling but it also lends itself to higher shine sometimes because it is slightly more wet as a formula so here is the swatch of exaggerize so beautiful and then next to it I have sunlit glow which I hope the camera can pick up. It flashes from like a very yellow gold to an iridescent pink, and it has this duochrome quality to it that is very reminiscent of Tom Ford Sphinx. I don't know if you guys remember that cream shadow. I think she formulated that too when she was creative director. So it has that duochrome shifty quality that Sphinx has, but just look how beautiful these shades are. I think the sheen on Exaggerize is a bit more wet looking and the, the micro glitters are a little bit more noticeable. Whereas I feel like with Sunlit Glow, it's more of like a pearly sheen. I also want to compare the Exaggerize um, single shadow with the Exaggerize topper shade in the quad because I think they're basically intended to be the same shade or a similar kind of shade where there's this like bronzy base but there's actually a very wet looking almost silvery sparkle. I think the palette topper is a little bit more silvery whereas the Exaggerize um, Cream Shadow is slightly warmer but they're very very similar in like idea. So that is the palette shade right there and that is the cream shade. And because of the nature of the cream shadow, it's a little bit smoother. Whereas the palette shade, I think you need to sort of work it into the skin a little bit to get that like full glazy reflect, but it does get there. I'm so glad they made this as a single cream shadow because my fear, though I love this topper, my fear has been that it will develop hard pan over time. And I think that could potentially happen, especially the more I press into it. I actually think the Exaggerize cream shadow has a deeper base and therefore it looks like you have layered a topper on top of a deeper base eyeshadow. It has that like nuanced complexity because of the contrast between the base color and the glitters, whereas Sunlit Glow doesn't have as high of contrast, but it has a bit of a shift instead. I'm going to apply one shadow on each eye and then we'll blend it out in the end, but I'm gonna start with Exaggerize just so you can see um, how it looks with one shade on each eye. So it has that like whipped moussey texture. I can just pick it up with a little domed brush, zoomed you in even more, and this is the most easy formula to work with. I just honestly sweep this all over the eye. I even take it up to my socket bone, even in my inner corner. And on my skin tone, I feel like it's just the most perfect one and done sort of wet looking sheen across the eye. And even though it does obviously have micro glitters in here, it doesn't feel um, gaudy or overdone. Because the particles are so small, it actually has a really refined quality to it. Then I'm going to take Sunlit Glow, which I actually haven't applied to the eyes yet. I've only tried Exaggerize. So I'm gonna do the same thing with Sunlit Glow. Just pick it up with a brush and sweep it across the eyes. Ooh, wow, that is so pretty. The pink shift is a lot more visible on my eyes than it seemed in the swatch, right? Do you agree? I do think that because Sunlit Glow doesn't have as pigmented of a base, as Exaggerize, you have to be really careful about blending this evenly so that 
the particles don't look patchy. Whereas I feel like Exaggerize is a little bit more forgiving because there's a more pigmented base. You don't quite see, I don't know, you don't quite see as much skin through the shadow. This is a little bit more sheer because the base is not as pigmented. And so you have to be careful, especially because this has a shift to blend out the shadow completely um, and to make sure that there aren't any kind of chunky areas of duochrome glitter. So that is Sunlit Glow and this is Exaggerize. I hope the camera can pick up the nuances. They're also much more visible under natural light, I think. Now that you've seen what each shade looks like on the eye, I'm going to just do a mix of both shades on each eye, just to even it out. I actually really like the way these two shades look together. It's almost like a bronze with a flash of pink. It's very pretty. I also have this formula in the Walk of No Shame shade, which I love. I've used it on my channel, which I'll link below. I have not tried the matte formula, or the matte shades in this formula, and I don't really care to. I haven't heard the best things, and I also don't know about the eyeliners. I haven't tried those. But I'm gonna go on to mascara, and I have to tell you, I love the Legendary Lashes Volume 2. I recently tried this for the first time on camera, and I've loved it even more the more I've used it. So this builds a dramatic lash very quickly. It doesn't take time for you to sit there and build it up, but it builds the lash without getting overly clumpy. So it's the perfect balance of like drama and a structured lash. So this is the wand. It has, you know, those like bristly fibers and this is water resistant, but it's not completely waterproof. There have been days where I've had minor smudging, but it's the kind of thing you can wipe away really easily. I've also had days where it hasn't smudged at all, but it's never been like a problem. I do have a lash lift and a lash tint right now, so I'm sure that helps. So I just added mascara to this eye so you could see the difference, and I'm going to look up so you can really see the definition between the lashes and the difference compared to the other side. I think this is a mascara I would still really enjoy, even if I didn't have the lash lift and I were just curling my lashes. I feel like if you don't wanna sit there for a long time and build and build and you want volume, like serious volume, this is definitely a mascara for you. And this is a huge difference for me as someone with very fine, straight Asian lashes. So these are the eyes done. I just finished off my mascara. I filled in my brows. I don't have the Charlotte Tilbury brow stuff, as I mentioned. I just wanna say my last thoughts on the eyeshadow products are that I think the Eyes to Mesmerize formula is a great place to start if you're a makeup beginner, if you want something that's easy to just like throw on and go, and it's really mistake proof. They do crease on me because I have oily eyelids. I don't think there are really many cream shadows that don't crease on me at all. And if there is, you can just tap it out with your finger. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna move on to lips and I have to talk about the iconic um, Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Liner. And I have this in the shade Pillow Talk 2 Medium. This is actually also a new newish product to me. I had not tried this formula before. Obviously people love it. They love the original Pillow Talk. They love Iconic Nude, which I think I would love too. Um, Pillow Talk 2 Medium is like a mid-tone rose with a bit of a berry quality. This is a very long lasting lip liner formula and it is like a pencil formula and you sharpen it. It sets to a matte finish, it lasts through eating and drinking, and you know, I think there are so many lip formulas on the market right now that are great, that trying this in 2022 for the first time, my mind isn't like completely blown. However, I think Charlotte Tilbury was making lip liners a thing and creating lots of different lip liner tones and undertones and shades before other brands were doing it and before lip liner was really popular. So that's my two cents on the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you get it. It's a great formula. It's just in 2022, not like gonna blow my mind, but it's an excellent formula and I'm really happy 
to have the um, Pillow Talk 2 medium shade because I've been curious to try it. The lip product I'm going to use is my lipstick of choice from the brand. And this is the Happy Kiss formula, which is their shiny, sheer, melty lipstick. I have the shade Pillow Talk, which I think is actually warmer than the original Pillow Talk. At least that's what my sense is. Um, I don't have the original Pillow Talk lipstick, but just based on swatches, that's what I have inferred. This is a click up lip product. You don't want to click too many times because it does not go back down, but it's so comfortable and shiny on the lips. It's very balmy and it almost like coats the lips. It almost feels like sort of like a lip mask. I also have two of the Hot Lips 2 lipsticks, which was her collection that is refillable. And I have one in each formula, her matte formula, as well as her kissing formula, which is I think her cream finish. I think these were actually the second product that I bought from Charlotte Tilbury and I purchased these at the same time during a Sephora sale and I just couldn't resist the packaging on these. So Angel Alessandra is one of the shades that I have. I think this is the kissing formula and it has these black jaguars and this metallic finish. Mine is all scuffed up now because this is a very well-loved product. And I still think this shade is actually very unique because it's a light kind of almost like a creamsicle sort of peach and it has a very warm orangey undertone. And the cream finish of the Kissing Formula is very balmy, it's super moisturizing, it smooths over lip lines, and Angel Alessandra is such a flattering light nude on me. Most lipsticks that are this light actually wash me out, but this actually has enough warmth in it to make me look lively and awake. The other shade I have is Karina's Star. So this one is this like black galaxy star print, and this is the matte formula. And these are all refillable, so if you ever, <laughs> ever went through a lipstick, you could just buy the refill and pop it into this packaging, which I've never done. Um, don't see myself doing ever. And Karina Star is the most beautiful, corally, bright coral kind of shade. And this is the Matte Revolution formula, which is a matte lipstick, but it's a very creamy matte. And it's super flattering, comfortable on the lips. It's not like a powdery dry down at all. So that is Karina Star at the end. That's Angel Alessandra, which you can see reflects back a little more light, whereas Karina Star is a little bit more matte, definitely super opaque. So from side to side, this is Lip Cheat Pillow Talk 2, Pillow Talk Happy Kiss, Angel Alessandra the Cream Finish, and Karina Star in the matte lipstick. So this is the finished look, and I think it is undeniably a signature Charlotte Tilbury look, right? There's the glowy skin, there's a bronze goddess feeling to it, but overall, the, the tones pulled very pink, and the pink in the eyes, the pink on the cheeks, the pink on the lips, it all kind of works together in a very cohesive color story. And I think the same would be true if I went for bronzy tones, if I went for cooler tones. There's a way that there's a color harmony throughout a lot of the products. That's not me saying you need to go buy the entire Pillow Talk collection or any of these products like together. All I mean is that there is a very cohesive brand identity in terms of creating specific finishes and specific undertones that are very consistent throughout the brand. Before we wrap up, I have a few skincare items that I want to talk about because Obviously, Charlotte Tilbury is known for makeup, but they do have skincare and a lot of it. Some of it I like and some of it is just kind of okay. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Serum Crystal Elixir. This is their hydrating serum. It has um, a squeezy dropper and it's this hydrating milky texture. 
To me, this is very clear that a makeup artist formulated this serum because I think it's great for makeup prep in that it's hydrating, it sinks in quickly, and it also has a slight luminosity to it. If you look at the ingredients list, actually in a lot of Charlotte Tilbury products, they're like, there's like amethyst powder and gold powder and they're like at the bottom of the ingredients list so I don't know like what they're really doing or if they're that visible but it's more that this does create like a hydrated luminous finish across the skin but it sinks in really quickly and it's very lightweight I will say it is pretty fragranced and to me I would not reach for this were it not for makeup prep because it it is heavily fragranced I feel like it's about making the skin look good and the ingredients you know they're not active ingredients they're not going to exfoliate or do anything like that but it makes the skin look nice and if you are struggling with skin prep under makeup this might be somewhere to turn but it's not my first pick for charlotte tilbury skincare one of the things i do love i've talked about repeatedly it was in my mid-year skincare favorites is the charlotte tilbury magic eye rescue with retinol so this is a very emollient buttery eye cream it sinks in super quickly it has a touch of retinol to help with anti-aging around the eye and it just is very elegant it sinks in quickly but it, it's rich enough for me to feel like i'm getting some sort of eye treatment overnight and it's really surprised me honestly i didn't know how i would feel about charlotte tilbury skincare they sent me a lot of things and this has remained in my everyday kind of skincare drawer ever since I also like that her jar packaging is now refillable and um, I think skincare is something people go through a lot more quickly than a lipstick so the refillable concept makes more sense here because you're purchasing the pod that goes into the glass packaging. So to me that's refillable packaging that actually makes sense. And so the same concept applies to the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. So this is the original cream that she loves to talk about. There's like a whole mythology around the cream, how she formulated it herself for makeup prep, and then her clients started asking her for it. And so she formulated this. It's a pretty rich white cream. It also has that like powdery floral smell. And you'll see it's a pretty stiff texture. So that is the cream. It is really hydrating. And I will say like the emollients in this makes my skin feel really nice and look really nice. For me, it's a little bit rich for daytime, but I actually like this as a night cream. And I don't find that I need to use any oils or anything additional on top of it, but it's also not too heavy that it just feels like a mask on my skin. It actually does sink in. However, it is very fragranced. So if you're sensitive to that, you might wanna stay away from the skincare. Um, Otherwise, I think a lot of skin types will really like this cream. Her night cream, however, I, I mean, that was the one true like fail for me <laughs> in the lineup of Charlotte Tilbury's products. Not because it's a bad product, but because it's so not for my skin type. I applied it one night after cleansing to seal in my makeup and I applied the same amount of cream that I would with any other cream. So maybe like a dime or nickel sized amount. And it never sunk in. It's basically like very fancy Vaseline. It has that like petroleum balmy feel. So actually if you like slugging or if you have dry skin and you are really looking for something to seal over like dry patches or peeling, it can be healing in that way. But for me, I went to bed that night and my face kept sticking on my pillowcase and the product never sunk in and it was so bad that I, I had to get up at like 1 a.m. and wash my face and come back to bed because it was so heavy and obviously that's user error and also because it's not formulated for my skin type so it's not a true fail in that regard it's a really nice product and I know people who love it it just really 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 was not for me and I feel like people need to know this is a balm. If you like that and you want a fancy version of that, then maybe give that a try.
So I hope this was helpful for you as a sort of brand guide, whether or not you share my tastes or we have the same skin type or the same preferences, I hope this was helpful for you in some way. There are obviously so many Charlotte Tilbury products. They have a ton of SKUs. They're always coming out with new things, with limited edition things. So I wasn't able to get to everything, but I hope I got to the heavy hitters of the brand. If there's ever anything you want me to review, you're curious to see my thoughts on, please feel free to tag me or send it my way. I would love for you to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed this. And thanks for spending time with me today. I'll see you in the next one.